And we are tracking Hurricane Ian as it slowly approaches Florida's west coast. This is the latest track, and although the storm is not directly hitting us, we're sure to feel strong waves of wind and rain. And here is how the storm looks from the International Space Station. It's footage released from NASA as the ISS flies over the system. Even from 250 miles away up in space, the storm looks pretty massive. And the hurricane is only expected to intensify tomorrow and Wednesday. Here in South Florida, the bands of Hurricane Ian are already impacting us. Today we saw flooding in parts of Coral Gables near Coconut Grove. Drivers having to deal with major frustrations on their commute as they navigate through those flooded streets. Well, this will hopefully alleviate some of that flooding. The South Florida Water Management District is lowering the water levels in canals. They've taken them down to their low range, so the canals are ready to absorb lots of rain. And it's rain that comes to us right at the beginning of King Tide season, which means the potential for even more flooding. Tonight, we have team coverage for you, including CBS 4's Gabrielle Arzola from the Florida Keys on how people there are preparing for the storm. And our own Jacqueline Quinn will join us with the rundown of Miami-Dade and Broward counties and what officials are doing here to mitigate some of the flooding that we are already seeing. But let's begin with next weather chief meteorologist and hurricane specialist Ivan Cabrera. Ivan, tell us about the 11 p.m. advisory that just so came in. So some changes. Yeah, absolutely. 105 is the current wind feel there. 105 mile an hour winds. This is still the category two. We've had a little bit of dry air working with it here, but I think from here on out, it is going to continue to ramp up, particularly tonight as it moves across Cuba and then continues moving off to the north. And notice the movement itself. We have lost any kind of westerly component now. This is moving due north and then eventually Eventually, it's going to make that hook into uh, Florida, and there are some changes with that track. I'll show you that in a second, but we don't have to wait for, you know, the closest pass, which we'll have tomorrow night across the uh, Keys here. Look at all the rain that has been moving in, and you know about it. Just watch out your window here. Torrential amounts of rain have been uh, moving through. Anywhere from two to as much as four inches have already fallen. Another pocket of heavy rainfall moving uh, through the Keys right now. Frequent lighting with this, some gusty winds, and flood advisories have been on and off. We've got another one now that's now in effect until 1215 for basically Fort Lauderdale all the way down to Cutler Bay with that last band that came through. And that's going to be the deal here. Bands will come through. They'll provide us with some very heavy rainfall, gusty winds. We'll get a break and then we'll get right back into it. Just like a typical uh, cyclone here, like a typical hurricane or tropical storm with the feeder bands. Flood watch, of course, in effect for the entire state as we'll be under the heavy rain, but also within that flood watch, expecting flash flood warnings as well as we head deeper into the storm here in the next two to three days. So this is a new track from the National Hurricane Center. Watch out category four beginning Tuesday at eight o'clock tomorrow at 140. This continues then heading up closer to Tampa Bay and there are some changes with this track. If you've been following this closely, now this is pushing towards the east not to threaten us. And I don't think as I've been saying this cone is going to push further east, but Places now in play because it is a cone of concern, but also uncertainty. Fort Myers to the north and also into Tampa Bay. There it is a category three, and this is going to be the huge issue as well. It's going to slow down as it approaches Tampa Bay. And when you get a 120 mile an hour hurricane just to your west there, all that water is going to get pushed in. It's going to go through the bay in Tampa, and it is going to cause some significant, if not catastrophic flooding there is what we're talking about. And yeah, then this is going to head up towards the peninsula. This is also a change and then crossing to the north and east. The models are still, you know, kind of going back and forth a little bit on us here. In fact, the latest Euro run is very interesting. Has it going back uh, north after it makes landfall here? But basically we need to prepare down in South Florida for a tropical storm. We do have that hurricane warning uh, for the uh, dry Tortugas there, but still no significant changes here. Key West up to the uh, seven mile bridge. That's still a tropical storm warning. And then from Marathon up, we have a tropical storm warning watch for the potential of uh, some gusty winds that are going to be coming through. The surge is going to be an issue two to four feet and then minor coastal flooding, I think, for coastal Miami-Dade and uh, Broward counties heading into uh, the next uh, 24 to 48 hours as the system continues to be with us. I'll recap this way. 40, 70 mile an hour winds, two to four foot storm surge. This is for the lower and middle keys, four to eight, uh, eight uh, inches of rainfall. And then we're going to have even heavier rain, I think, in Miami-Dade. The wind's not as gusty and the flood Flooding is going to be on the coast, but that will be minor. I'll be 